We're going to show you how to make three different types of vivarium background in this video. We've got the traditional style tropical enclosure that no doubt everybody has seen, but we've also got special ones like our bearded dragon's background, our leopard gecko's background, and most recently this one that we're building right here. But which background is going to suit your animal? Well, we're going to run through all of that right now. So there is a massive safety issue involved with this because a background just like this will actually catch fire in a background with this animal. Whereas this style background is just totally inadequate for animals like this. So how do you know which style of background is actually going to be beneficial for your specific species? Well, it all depends on the species requirements. Does your animal need heat? or higher humidity, or species that just require an awful lot of climbing spaces. Maybe some that need naturalistic hides. So it all depends on the actual species. Let's start with the tropical. This style enclosure is the most commonly you're likely to see across all of the social media platforms because they are so easy to make. They are extremely tedious and God, they can get on your nerves at times. This is basically a tropical enclosure. This is our morning gecko setup. We actually built it for a crested gecko, but transferred it over to this morning gecko setup. This is extremely expanding foam you can use pond stuff you can use external use only they're about the only ones you can really use solely because the great stuff expanded foam and the external use are aimed to use in higher humidities and they are aimed to get wet and still be quite good the way we build this one is so simple we put all our logs in place first then use the expanding foam to go over all of the areas the expanding foam can then attach the log work to the background pieces and we just leave it to cure for the acquired time. Summer is 24 hours, summer is a lot more than that. It all depends on the curing time for that expanded foam that you are using. All the instructions will be on the tin. Once it has cured, you just get a few sharp knives, start carving the background into whatever desired shape you want, cover it in a marine grade silicone, and while the silicone is still wet, you can actually force substrate into that silicon and it just dries and adheres just like this. However, this enclosure has absolutely zero protection to heat. So this enclosure would melt and catch fire if it was to be inside a bearded dragon's enclosure. When it has dried and adhered, you can start adding in various vines or extra log work, plants, all that sort of stuff to make a truly naturalistic bioactive enclosure along with its cleanup crew and live plants. If you want to see a full video step by step on how this was built, every little piece, then click on the card directly above right now. But an enclosure background just like this is absolutely perfect for the slightly more arid species like a bearded dragon. This is a polystyrene sheet. In America you call it styrofoam, but here in the UK we call it polystyrene. It's the little white plastic ball things. It's a sheet of that covered on top by another sheet and we've just carved out this amazing rock work. We actually carved it out with knives and uh, we added a bit of heat using a blow lamp just to help melt the sides and give it that natural sort of rocky effect. It's not just backgrounds you can do like this, you can actually do ledges and stairs and steps and just loads of extra decor within the actual enclosure like we have. But how do you protect the polystyrene against the heat? We've got an external use plaster over the top of this, you can also use tile grout or dry locks and a good one as well. Anything that leaves that firmer surface and you coat the whole background in a few layers of that. We like to do it a little bit runny and add a little piece of acrylic paint into the mix just to help give it that colour and that naturalistic look. If you don't want to do that, you can go over the top with it afterwards and paint it with acrylic paint. Again, the acrylic paint is non-toxic, even under heat. So that's absolutely ideal for this. Make sure it all cures perfectly fine before you add the species back into that enclosure. The joy with making your own backgrounds is you can add hygrometers into the side. You can build them into the actual background. We've got thermometers and hygrometers all built in with this enclosure. To show how durable this is, this enclosure is actually four years old now. It is starting to show its age in a few little areas. So subscribe if you want to see a background build on this enclosure. Another little top tip for enclosure builds just like this is when the plaster that you are using or the tile grout or whatever you're using is still wet, you can add a texture to it by simply adding a piece of sand over the top and pushing it into the actual background or your substrate or anything like that. Make sure it's dry before you put it onto the background and that will then leave that texture in the background when it has dried. There are other ways of doing arid background enclosures, but you can also twist the background build to be more of a floor build as well. Just like in this enclosure, our leopard gecko's enclosure. This is a four foot wooden enclosure from Viv Exotics and we built the background in just one sheet. We didn't stack any polystyrene on top of each other. We just got one sheet cut out 
all of the various shapes of the rockwork and silicon glued them to the back panel. We then got the heat and shaped them and gave them that rough texture, covered the entire background and the wood that was in between all the pieces in the plaster that we did coloration with a sand colored acrylic paint. That gave it this rocky textured background that we do have. However, within the background where it meets the actual floor itself, we added in some rock work, some slate work and built that into the background also along with the hygrometers and the thermometers that we have built in. We also used expanding foam over the cool side of the enclosure to totally encapsulate the whole moist hide area. The moist hide on this enclosure is actually accessible from the side of the enclosure. So we don't need to go in to actually move the moist hide or to rehydrate the moist hide. We also use the moist hide for a lay box in this enclosure. We covered the expanding foam with the plaster and then while the plaster was still wet, we covered it in sand. So although it does look like it's got a sand substrate over the cold side of the enclosure, it's actually a really firm substrate and that's how we've achieved a solid floor substrate that looks naturalistically loose. Within that expanding foam area, we managed to insert a load of rock work and secure the rock work. We built in a few hides into there as well, and it just looks natural with the planters that were added into that enclosure. If you want to see the full build video on this entire enclosure, one video, the whole thing, step by step, every little tip and hint and where all the plant, everything about this enclosure in that one video, I'll leave the card directly above right now. Okay, so there maybe is more than three in this actual video. We're gonna go through our, one of our tarantula enclosure builds now because that was done a specific way. And then we'll move over to this way which incorporates every method all into one big build. The Lassiodorus Paraballus enclosure. This is the Salmon Pink Bird Eating Tarantula. You can see her uh, just over the back, tucked up behind that rockwork just there. She's got the big hide there. Now this one was built with layers of polystyrene sheets on that back wall coming down. We then got a normal drinks bottle put it down there, we propped it up with a few rocks, and then we expand and foamed around here, so we had a planter just here, over the top of the hide, and then down that side as well. So all around that far end is all a solid substance. We covered it in tile grout along the whole background and silicon over various different areas. One, to attach the rock work to the top so it wasn't loose rocks, so there's no way those rocks can fall into the hide or fall onto her at any time whatsoever. Every little piece of wood that you see, it's all silicon down, so it's all nice and firm, and the majority of that background got covered in silicon and substrate. The substrate has to be dry before it goes onto the silicon, otherwise it just won't work. But that is the way we've got the grout background, there's no added heat in here. I just wanted that rock texture, like the side of a cliff mountain or something along those lines. That's the way I did the background. Just added various colors into the actual tile grout itself to give a base color. And then we went over with a touch of acrylic paint, just tarting up a few little areas, adding a few little highlights to that background. We got that piece of wood there that just looked absolutely amazing. And it followed the line of the ridge that we did build. So that got silicone in place. We then had to take the bottle out of there because if you remember we put a bottle in there to silicon over to keep that shape in there nice and firm. We got the bottle out, we added the live plants and we've got soft substrate, loose substrate over this side if she so feels the need to burrow. We also added some into there just so she can make herself a little bit more comfy. But this way we had a solid background, we have a half solid surface that does have a little bit of cushioning around it and a loose substrate all in one enclosure providing the very best enrichment for that particular species. Again, if you want to see the full build video step by step on this enclosure, how we turned a broken exoterra into an amazing amazing naturalistic bioactive salmon pink bird eater enclosure just click on the card directly up there right now now we here at northern exotics we like to experiment with loads of different things here and there the one thing we learned with this enclosure is make sure if you are using expanding foam that it is completely cured for double the amount of acquired time before you actually go in there with any sort of flame to it, I used a blow, little blow lamp thing just to help shape everywhere, just to melt it down that little bit. There was still gases inside that because it wasn't cured correctly. We used an awful lot of expanded foam all in that one area, so it just it took longer to cure. It did set fire to this enclosure. This was while we were still building it, so there was no animals in there or anything like that, and we did have fire extinguishing properties close to us, a big glass of water that we chucked in. Just make sure your expanded foam is extremely gone off before you actually do 
actually introduce any sort of heat or flame to the enclosure. Learn from my mistake. But can you add all of these different elements into one big build? Well, that's where this one comes into play. Because this is gonna be a tropical enclosure, so it's gonna have the higher humidity, but it's also gonna have a fairly decent amount of heat inside this enclosure. So again, as we've already learned, we don't want heat and polystyrene together. So I do need to make some sort of heat protection towards the background pieces. So over the side panel pieces where it was fairly boring, we've added a bit of texture in a few different pieces like this. We are gonna be getting a little blow lamp and shaping all these flatter surfaces throughout. So that's gonna look awesome. It's all gonna get coated with a plaster substance across the whole background areas. The expanded foam areas slightly further down, they're all gonna get coated with the plaster as well. Everything is gonna get coated with the plaster. But then on top of the plaster, we're gonna be adding silicon, marine grade silicon, aquarium safe silicon, over loads of different areas, making big patches in this enclosure where we can add substrate to that silicon, giving it that loosest texture, just like we'd naturally see in a tropical sort of bioactive enclosure. The expanded foam doesn't always need to be any filling sort of areas. You can use it for tree root areas, just to add for a bit of background decor, just like we have just there. You can use it to secure big planters in place to the background walls, along with loads of little planters and logs to the background walls. This full build video will be out fairly soon, within the next two weeks, because we are cracking on with it really well. And we're gonna have a massive twist at the end of this video, which I can't wait to show you guys. Just make sure you subscribe and your bell notification is switched to all notifications. That way, when the video does upload, you can have a watch and have a look at the twist at the end.